Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. I am Solomon Wangwe, the founder, uh, Chief Kazia Mukono of Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres Limited. Uh, I am so excited. Again, we have uh, an opportunity to have a very meaningful conversation with my two guests uh, today. Uh, and this is still on the topic of master planning. For those of you who missed out on the last conversation we had with Andrew Gus uh, Kusewa of Buchatman, and partners, please go back and check that out. Uh, this is a continuation of that conversation, especially in the context of one of our newest, most exciting projects called Ol Kekun, located in Naivasha, Kayole neighborhood, touching the Naivasha Nakuru Highway, right opposite the Safari Center development where Art Cafe and Naivas are. Uh, this is this conversation is about that. So. Uh, stay tuned. If you have questions, as always, send them through. We'll be happy to address them later. Uh, without much further ado, uh, to my right, I have Mrs. Manasse, uh, Mrs. Jane Manasse, uh, who is, um, she would never admit it, but a preeminent uh, professional in the planning industry. Uh, and I'll let her uh, tell you a little bit about uh, who she is, Mrs. Manasse. And don't, don't, don't uh, leave out any details. Let us have all of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as you've been told, my name is Jane Manasse. Um, I'm an urban planner. Some people call us physical planners. Um, I studied uh, my first degree in geography and sociology mm -hmm. from the University of Nairobi and graduated in 1970, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Before I, I was even a thought. <laughs> before you were <laughs> even a thought. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. At the time, we had a lot of opportunities because uh, um, there weren't many of us mm. uh, coming out as graduates. Yes. So we had a lot of employers coming to to look for us from the university. Okay. We'd end up with like five jobs at that time. So we had uh, some. Um, the chief planner of the Nairobi City Council who came to interview us and mm. he was quite uh, impressed by m my performance so the city re recruited me and then they sent me back for a master's degree okay first there was a diploma degree because at that time they were only offering a diploma in urban and regional planning at the University of Nairobi but after that they introduced a master's degree which I graduated with in 1975 okay yeah so and then from there I've worked with the, I worked with City Hall for many years, about 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, rising from an assistant, I mean, a trainee planner all the way to deputy director of planning. Okay. Then I was pinched from there mm -hmm. <laughs> by housing finance. Yes. To manage the housing project, they were developing what they were calling a low cost housing project in the eastern side of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the Comorock housing project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was in charge of that project. I worked for them for seven years. Okay. Uh, putting up Comorock housing project as a project manager, then okay. a managing director of the subsidiary company, Kenya Building Society, and some other project in Mombasa. Yes. It's called Fahari Estate, so mm. kind of low cost housing. Yes. After that, then I, I left and started my own company. Uh, International Project Planning and Management Consultants, which deals with urban planning as well as uh, project management okay. aspects of development. Uh, in between, I also served on the Njonjo Commission that looked at the land law systems of Kenya, the year two th 20, 2002. Yes. Yeah. So I've continued to do uh, pr to work privately mm -hmm. as a consultant on various projects. Mm -hmm. Many projects. Yes. I don't know whether I should mention any. <laughs> yes, well, uh, let, let us know Let us know a few at least. Uh, some of the projects I've worked on, uh, for example, uh, uh, Tatu City. Tatu City from its inception, I prepared, uh, I worked first with South Africans who were preparing the master plan then. Okay. And then when they left, I continued. I've been doing all the revisions of the master planning 
um, mm. uh, yeah. Okay. And um, I've done some work for also Econ. Yes, uh, Econ Group. E Econ Group, yes. Yeah. So they are putting up all these housing yes. for, for students. Kwetu. Kwetu. Yes. I've worked on a lot of those. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And many, many other projects. I, yes. can't, I can't mention all of them. Yeah, well, we'll be here for an hour if you did. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, you also failed to mention, because this is the one that stuck out for me, when, when uh, I forget who it was, I think it's your daughter, Naomi, mm -hmm. who referred me to you. Yes. Because she was referred to me by Munene, mm -hmm. yes. I believe, mm -hmm. uh, uh, another architect. I know many, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I, I found out that uh, if, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you are planner, licensed planner number two <laughs> in uh, this great republic. Yes, in this great re republic, I'm number two. Because, yes. uh, yeah, there weren't many of us, and we were the first planners to be trained in Kenya. Wow. Yeah, at the University of Nairobi. When, That's the, awesome. when the course was introduced, yes. we were the first lot, about 12 of us. Awesome. Yeah, one of them was, uh, was called Timothy Makunda. He's still alive, but he's not practicing. Okay. So he's planner number one, and then I'm planner yeah, number, number two. Number two. Yeah, if you wow. look at the register of planners <laughs> registered in Kenya, nice. I'm wow, number that's two. Amazing. Yeah. Talk about context, guys. This is why I'm always screaming and repeating only work with licensed professionals. And just because they're professionals does not necessarily mean that they are licensed to practice for that year you need to be sure uh, that they have renewed their practice license for the year. And you know, we, you, I, I, was very, um, I was very excited when I learned that because you have the context of history, mm -hmm. especially with regards to the planning tra trajectory in this country, mm -hmm. which is very important and I, I would, I'm sad to say, extremely neglected, uh, especially by this side of the industry, mm -hmm. the land developers like mm -hmm. us. Uh, like I said before, we're, we're not just in the business of selling proti maguta maguta. Uh, there's rhyme and reason for everything. There's a context. And so I'm very grateful that we were able to cross paths and mm -hmm. we, we managed to get you uh, to, to help us with this project in Naivasha. Mm -hmm. And we'll dig, dig into that shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, and to my left, uh, we have uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Osore of DLR Architects. Uh, who did our master plan for Okekun. He's working on one or two others as well, which we shall give you a sneak peek of when the time is right. <laughs> but Chris, please t introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are. Yes, thank you, Solomon, and uh, it's a pleasure to be part of this forum. Um, as uh, uh, Solomon has said, I'm an architect, a licensed architect. I studied uh, in the US uh, most of, uh, for most of my five-year master's program. Uh, worked there for 15 years and then came back to Kenya. For, I've been here for five years practicing architecture, mostly master planning architecture and design. Um, I don't know how much I should say, but I, I, I'm a Starehe grad. <laughs> Alliance. <Ooh. laughs> we have this banter. Um, graduated yeah. in 95 um, out of, from Starehe and um, I was actually accepted to uh, University of Nairobi. In fact, mm. all, my, all my architecture uh, fellows still say my name was on the register. It happened to be at the top, but anyway. yeah. <laughs> it was always on the register for, for four years uh -huh. until someone decided, oh, this guy's not coming. <laughs> okay. um, but I, I had, had the fortune of uh, getting a, a scholarship to Cornell University. Oh, no way. Um, in Ithaca. Okay. And um, through that, um, there was an assistantship program that took me to Drake University for my first year of, of uh, of uh, basically your general general classes, so mm. Cornell and Drake University had a had a sister arrangement, and so I'm sitting in Drake at Drake at, in De, in Des Moines, Iowa, um, studying, and um, Iowa State came recruiting. Iowa State University at the time was I think the fourth uh, best uh, architecture grad program in the country in the U.S., mm -hmm. and they came recruiting. I don't know how they they heard some of us were, were sitting there and. They offered me an opportunity to go to Iowa State and shift my, my um, enrollment from Cornell, which I obliged. Mm -hmm. And so I did a master's program at Iowa State. Um, I, I was fortunate in that in my third year of, of, of uh, architecture school, I was then again recruited by one of the top firms to work 
uh, as an intern. They had an internship program that blended quite well with um, their, uh, basically with your class schedule. So literally every semester they'd come and say, what's your class schedule? Can we plug in? How can we get you engaged in, mm. in, the, in the professional field as you're learning? Let's call it an assistantship. And there I was able, I was exposed to a lot of schemes, master plans globally. Uh, we did at the time the tallest scheme in South Korea, um, Latte Towers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm here, a third year student from Nairobi, working on really large schemes and plans that, you know, at the time were above anything I'd ever seen in my life. So it really started to teach me the value of planning and the value of um, the entire, building up the entire ecosystem. And which is, in, is interesting with what you were doing as Goshen in that, you know, the land, the person actually dealing with the land, the land developer, you know, has a, a certain number of metrics they're trying to achieve. And us as professionals need to find a way to plug ourselves into that. And that's what I, I saw and learned with some of these larger global schemes that were being done. Mm. And so as I was, I obviously graduated, I was fortunate to, to be employed by the first firm, worked with them for seven years. Um, and then uh, DLR came knocking, seems like people keep knocking <laughs> on my door and offering up opportunities. Mm. And um, so I joined DLR, um, gosh, 18, 19 years ago, that time flies. Mm -hmm. I'm older than I You said 19? Yeah. Eight. You've been at DLR for 19 years? Eight, actually 18, yeah, almost 18 years. Wow, yeah. okay. So, <laughs> that's long. That's, you could Ten have flights. had a child and it'd be I know, I know. <laughs> this year. <laughs> I know, time, yeah. time flies. So it's, okay. and, and when they came, you know, I, I, I was a young, young, you know, budding architect, planner. Um, and then, you know, rose through the ranks, uh, became a, a shareholder partner. And then uh, five years ago, um, interested the company into opening an Africa division, which mm -hmm. uh, we then opened up and now we, we were wholly owned subsidiary uh, in the Africa, Africa region based in Nairobi. So we're, we're really excited to be working on your projects and uh, as Mrs. Manasseh, we, we work on other schemes as well. So ah, you guys are doing uh, things together. <laughs> yes, that's yes, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's a small world. Yeah, um, it is, it especially is. in your in your in your profession. Mm -hmm. Any yes. any any uh, claim to fame so far in uh, in Kenya? Projects that people might recognize or know about, have heard about. Right. Yeah, I think uh, the first project, which yeah, it's a little bit of claim to fame. The Besides Al Kekun, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this 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 one's this one's going to be really amazing. I'm yeah. really excited about Al Kekun. Um, what brought us to uh, Kenya was uh, the, the Kenyatta University Master Plan. Uh -huh. So um, I was sitting in a conference in, uh, in Des Moines actually, the World Food Prize. And the Vice Chancellor then was being uh, awarded a, a, some accolades on what Kenyatta University was doing in the field of agriculture. Mm -hmm. So Jake what? No, this was actually Kenyatta University had a agriculture program okay. that they were uh, research that they were doing that around food science. Okay. And sitting at the World Food Prize, they were honoring um, the, that, that program mm -hmm. around some of those in, interventions. Um, and I was invited to that forum and um, I'm sitting there with some of the organizers and, and they said to her, you know, uh, Professor Mugenda, meet Chris Osori, he's a Kenyan. <laughs> okay. You guys should know each other. And, uh, Right then and there, we exchange cards, and she says, what, what do you do? I said, oh, I do, I'm an architect, I do planning, this and the other. She says, oh my God, we need a master plan. Mm -hmm. She says, okay, well, you came to the right place. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, three months later, we were on a plane to, uh, with my, my colleagues to uh, Kenyatta University and literally walked a thousand acres of that campus. Mm. Um, what year was this? This was in... 2015. Okay. Yeah, 2015. They have that much space, huh? Thousand acres. Thousand acres. Awesome. It's uh, you probably heard a little bit of uh, yes. kerfuffle in the news <laughs> about little, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the master plan that was being uh, edited mm -hmm. was the master plan that we had generated and had been gazetted okay. uh, by and had passed through. We we did a, an entire stakeholder engagement, which kind of comes back to the things we were, I was discussing earlier. 
you know, when you bring a master plan and a scheme needs to bring all the stakeholders, starting from the land developer all the way to the end user. Mm -hmm. And if, all of that has to be in sync. And we, we are just uh, tools to make facilitate that and facilitate yeah. people to facilitate that mm -hmm. uh, vision and mission through, throughout the process. Mm. Uh, but at any rate, that was a claim to fame. Um, we uh, were fortunate to be commissioned to uh, work on um, a project in Eastleigh called uh, Business Bay Square. It's about 1.2 million square feet. It's, I, I call it the two rivers of Eastlands mm -hmm. uh, on a six acre parcel. Um, yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's generating quite a little bit of a buzz. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, a few people have mentioned uh, that, that project uh, right. to me in the last couple of weeks. Right. It's, uh, we hopefully we, uh, we'll be opening in, uh, next, early next year. Uh, we're starting a fit out for most of the, the tenants. Okay. Uh, that was a large mixed use scheme. Again, it was a fairly complex project mm -hmm. on six acres. More of a, I call that an urban master plan. Mm -hmm. You're literally stacking uses vertically. Mm -hmm. uh, to make them cohesive, as opposed to on a mm -hmm. normal, typical land master plan, it's more horizontal. Horizontal, yeah. Um, and then obviously we've been fortunate to work with you and uh, Okikun and some of the other projects that are coming up that I think from the vision of Goshen in terms of how you think about projects is really exciting for us. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for that uh, introduction. The reason I asked both of you to tell, mm -hmm. tell everyone a little about yourself is so that people understand that you know, when, when we advise that you work with professionals, um, it's, it's not hot air. We, we go through a lot of uh, trouble, I would say, and, and put in a lot of effort to find the right people to work with on our projects because at the end of the day, that's how you create value. Not just for ourselves, but for our end user, our customers. That's what it's all about. And of course, some of it is required by law and policy. <laughs> It's the other thing a lot of us don't like to talk about in, in our field. But uh, thank you for that. Um, so I think the first question I will ask both of you, maybe starting with Mrs. Manasseh, mm -hmm. in your view, what is the difference between a planner and a surveyor? Because a lot of our customers are typic <laughs> uh, typically familiar <laughs> with a surveyor. And, um, and, and so we've been at great pains to explain to people how we went about creating, you know, half acre plots in Acacia Cove in Nanuki versus 50 by 100 plots, mixed use commercial residential in, in Naivasha. Um, what would you tell a lay person the differences between what you do as a licensed registered planner and a surveyor? Okay. <laughs> well, um we, uh, as planners, operate under the current Land Use and Physical Planning Act, number three of 2019. Mm -hmm. Plupa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I always tell everybody that before you do anything in terms of land, land use, mm -hmm. you must uh, engage a planner. In all these professions, a planner always goes first, mm -hmm. yeah, because the planner deals with the various land uses. Yes. In terms of preparation of a master plan, zoning, zoning, and you know subdivision. subdivisions, change of users, yeah, preparation of all the master plans or land use land use plans. Because we have different land use plans mm -hmm. at various levels. Yes. You have the integrated strategic planners planning plans. Mm -hmm. You have the local physical development plans and many others. Okay. So planners are engaged in as far as dealing with the land uses. Yeah? Yes. Land use planning and also dealing with policies that guide development. Okay. As you mentioned, in terms of zoning, I mean, if you are, for example, planning a city, uh, you can do it at high level, mm -hmm. but then you have to go into detail and come up with what you call zoning plans for various areas. Mm -hmm. And in those areas you define, other than the land uses, which you, you can say look, this is a residential area, yes. this is an industrial area, and this is a commercial centre, mm -hmm. and where are they going to be located? There are certain factors that you have to put into consideration when you're locating those facilities. Mm. It's not just a question of 
just haphazard yes. placing. There are criteria that you must uh, uh, utilize. Mm. And all these are linked up with the road network. Of course, yeah. And, and within that uh, planning, for example, in a city, you must provide other facilities. Like uh, if you are creating a population in mm. a certain area, you must uh, provide the supporting facilities. Yes. Like, for example, if people are moving in, they'll want schools. Yeah? From secondary, primary, nursery yes. school, and mm. so on and so forth. Mm. They'll want commercial facilities where they're going to shop. Mm. Yeah? Mm. And some people uh, are creating what they're calling camp, work, play, and, and live. Yes. You know, like uh, Tato City. Mm. And I'm sure that's also an, 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 um, a policy that you're trying to, uh, you're adapting in your schemes. Mm -hmm. So as planners, we must look at the population that we are generating in an area in, term, and in terms of land use, come up with the densities for those areas. For example, your scheme, we had to look at uh, what does the county government, uh, what are the standards yes. that the county government has put in place in, in terms, in as far as your project is concerned. Yeah. yeah because you could not just go in there and pro provide a, a, a 10 by 10 uh, plot. Mm. You have to go by the zoning policy that has been set aside by the, by the county government. Yes. So those are some of the factors that you have to look into in terms of when you're doing the land use planning. Yes. So we go first as planners come up with the la land use plans, master plans, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Locals, physical development plans, that's what planners do. Okay. After we've done that and got all the necessary approvals, mm. then a surveyor would now come in. Yeah. Yeah? A surveyor will now, uh, now demarcate the plots. For example, if I've come up with a subdivision scheme, mm. then it's the role of the surveyor now to come and demarcate and say, okay, your plot is from this point yes. to the other point. Yes. And prepare deed plans, yeah? yes. which he now must pre present to the director of service and obtain the necessary approvals yes. for, the, for the deed plan, yep. which will then result into a title deed mm -hmm. yeah? or a lease. Yeah, certificate certificate lease. Yeah. 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 So that is the difference. For them, they deal with the actual survey, laying of beacons, coming up with deed plans. Yeah. And uh, my friend may add a bit more on that, but for us, we deal with the land use, okay. land use planning and zoning, coming up with various policies yes. that will guide development. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's an important distinction to me because even when we started uh, at Goshen Acquisitions mm -hmm. uh, 2012, mm -hmm. we had no idea we needed to work with planners. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the surveyor do everything, <laughs> include decide <laughs> what how to cover up the piece of the mother parcel yeah. into what sizes and what shapes, how mm. to arrange the circulation, road, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and, and I know for a fact that most of us in Kenya, the market, the investors, the people who are buying plots of land mm. or properties have no idea what goes into creating a product, if you will, that piece of land. Because at the end of the day, that's our product as Goshen Acquisitions. Mm -hmm. uh, and in many cases, even we, the land developers, have no clue. We're just operating, uh, sort of shooting from the hip, not understanding what the policy requires, what the, the logical projection should be, mm -hmm. uh, as far as having a, a, a planner guide the surveyor uh, to, to finish what the planner has conceptualized mm -hmm. in the context of the county. Mm -hmm county's laws, requirements. You mentioned 10 by 10. You know, in, in Kenya now, the big craze is 50 by 100s, yeah. which is one eighth plus. <laughs> one eighth, you know, yeah. buy a 50 by 100, Nakuru, Kitengela, Nanyuki, wherever, you know, it's it's 150K, 250K, 350K. Mm -hmm. uh, clean title ready. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to, to, to understand from your view, uh, uh, that scenario. W what are your feelings around the, the, the this 50 by 100 <laughs> phenomenon as is commonly, I mean, newspapers, TV, radio station, that's all we hear. Mm. Uh, and even, even for us, our customers, a lot of times will lament about why we don't provide them more 50 by 100 plots to buy. 
And I've, I've really struggled to explain to them that in most cases, I can't because it's against a county policy, for instance, mm -hmm. to do 50 by hundreds in that area because of such and such. Mm -hmm. um, what would you advise, you know, your daughter or your granddaughter who's saved money, they've denied themselves all manner of privileges and, and pleasures in life to, to save up this money, to save up this capital. They're ready to buy land as, as an investment. Um, what would you say to them about, about 50 by 100 or a quarter acre or a half acre versus the other? What would you say to them to make sure that they're buying the right thing? Well, I think uh, um, it depends sometimes on the, the question of affordability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Some people may not be able to afford the quarter acre plot and they would want to go for an eighth of an, an acre. Yeah. Uh, so it's a question of affordability coming into play. But uh, I keep saying that my advice is, even from a land owner's point of view, you may go for an eighth of an acre thinking you are going to make money, but if you come up with a, a way laid out scheme which is maybe a quarter of an acre, you may end up making the same kind of money because mm -hmm. you are providing you know, proper infrastructure uh, which, you know, which makes the project more accessible, more aesthetically it's a better project. More sustainable. More, more sustainable yeah. and you know, you've got more space, more green areas mm. than uh, going for an eighth of an acre which is very, very tight. Because mm. in terms of building, uh, because again, we, although it's controlled, you find that a lot of people are now coming there and just putting up uh, any development, you know, yes. without uh, considering what the county mm. have in place. Mm. So, I, th I would, ad for me, I would advise my, for if they are my children, for me, I'd rather they go for an, you pay a little more, and you get a better product. Mm. A project that is more sustainable, okay. with well laid out infrastructure, mm. rather than going for the smaller quarter, an eighth of an acre, mm. which eventually will end up very congested and in a few years, it will not be the same. Yes, um, yes, I, I could yap about that issue for, <laughs> for three years straight, if you let me. But, you know, I, I said to someone uh, recently, um, and I also shared this in the last video we did with uh, Andrew Kusewa mm -hmm. of Buchatman, that uh, someone uh, said that they've been buying 50 by 100s from all of us land selling companies over the last seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. And, and they were asking, what should I do? Should I sell them off now and, and buy something uh, closer, more appropriate that I can use now, as opposed to having these speculative pieces of land all over the place? Um, and I, you know, I, I said to them very candidly with, with due respect that, listen, if you bought a 50 by 100 that did not have the appropriate user or zoning, uh, it's, it's a freehold agricultural titled piece of land, it's a 50 by 100 somewhere in a bush somewhere uh, with no road network, with no power, with no mm. water, uh, even worse for me, no waste treatment mm. uh, infrastructure. Mm. Mm. What you have done is you've simply secured yourself eight pieces of land that you clearly own, you have title to, that you will be buried in when you die. Uh, so you basically have eight burial sites for your family to, to choose where to, to lay your body to rest. Because until, until you have all those things in place, you cannot use that piece of land. Yeah, true, you can't use it. it is of no value to someone else either. Mm -hmm. if, you, if the point was to sell it later for capital gains, uh, who is going to buy that? Uh, especially if your 50 by 100 is, is part of a a, a thousand plot subdivision scheme, mm -hmm. there'll be a thousand of you trying to sell the same sizes of land at some point. What does that mean for them, your marketability? And you know, they, they, they did take a little bit of offense, but I think they got the point. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with, with my assessment? Because uh, the other thing I, I always close with them uh, is that at the end of the day, 50 by hundreds or even quarters, whatever the size is, without 
infrastructure planning is simply a seed for future slums. Uh, and they thought that was a very harsh and insensitive <laughs> thing to say, given that they have spent all this money over years acquiring these pieces of land. What, what, would, what would be your assessment of my response to them? I think you, you, I did not want to use the word slum. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I said uh, we are actually creating slums mm. by going that route and mm. not providing the infrastructure. Yeah, most of these schemes don't have the roads. Mm. As you rightly say, they don't even have the sewage treatment plant. So you end up with the plots with the individual uh, septic, septic tank. tanks, yes. uh, uh, which environmentally they may not be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So really, we are rightly, you, as you rightly say, we are, we are actually creating slums. Mm. So we are better off in investing in a quarter acre and those who can afford a bigger plot yeah. than going that route. Mm. Quarter acre and provided you, provi you, 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 you do provide the infrastructure. Yes. And uh, that's why sometimes I insist on certain road sizes. Yes. Some, yes. People, <laughs> some people really <laughs> say, now you're wasting our land. You mm. know, I could have got more plots uh, out of this. By making the road By narrow. By making uh, the road yeah. narrow. And I've always, Mr. So Osora, you know, yes. I'm very particular <laughs> about road sizes. Yes. Because you don't want to create a small road which, again, cannot be used properly because when you get, for example, people coming to visit you, mm. you don't have enough space, parking space in your, in your compound. Mm. Where do they park? Along the road. Yes. So if you do not have a, a wide enough road mm. where people can park their cars yeah. and also leave enough space for other infrastructure, yes, like drainage. power drainage, power line, walk, walking tra yes, trails, sidewalks, yeah, yeah. sidewalks and so on, then the scheme is not, uh, to me, it's not uh, viable, it's not sustainable. Mm. You want to create a good environment where you can also landscape the, yes. the, the, the walkways, the, 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 the the road reserve nicely. Yes. You create a good environment, green environment. Mm. Yeah. So that can be achieved when you have a, a slightly bigger plot. Yes. And uh, with a, a nice size of road. Yes. Yeah, which can be landscaped nicely. Excellent. Yeah. I'm yeah. very happy to hear you say that because mm. you know, a lot of times when I say that, people assume I have a vested interest in selling my product. Uh, as opposed to them considering someone else's product. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming from planner number two <laughs> in this great republic, yeah. I, think, I think it speaks for itself. And, and, and uh, viewers, you've heard it from Mrs. Manasse. <laughs> I didn't tell her to say that. That is her professional <laughs> assessment, mm -hmm. given how long she has been in the industry. Um, and I hope you take that to heart and, and, and consider it carefully, despite its implications. Um, Chris, I know you have a lot to say about that issue. Uh, anything you want to say about this 50 by 100 phenomenon and, and in your view uh, or experience, at what point does an architect uh, become necessary uh, in, 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 the, in the process of land subdivision or community development? Because at the end of the day, we're in the business of building communities of people mm -hmm. even though they're buying speculatively mm -hmm. uh, and may not settle there themselves there's they're still a community of landowners absolutely absentee mm -hmm. landowners even mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your what's your feeling what's your view your qualified professional <laughs> view <laughs> I, I couldn't i couldn't agree more mm. um you know there are two things as for, for us as as what we call ourselves you know we, Architects, by definition, an architect is a steward of the environment. By definition, the raw definition of what an architect is, 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 a, is a professional who looks out for the environment. Mm. And sometimes that gets lost um, in the commercials. But what we're touching on here is a, is a term we coin called livable communities. What does that mean, livable communities? So the 50 by 100s, with no infrastructure, run, open running sewer, it's a slum. There's, who wants to live there? Right? Mm. Mm. People live in those situations not by choice, but just because they have nothing better to, to access. Yeah. To access. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's incumbent on us in the industry 
to create and put platforms in place for these livable communities. So that's, that's really key. So that's a little bit of my professional view against, it's not, not that I'm against quarters, quarter acres or 50 by hundreds, it's how do we make 50 by hundreds livable? Livable, yes. Right? Yeah. And in those 50 by hundreds, is there diversity of space? Is, are there the schools? Are there the parks? Mm. Uh, is, are the roads wide enough? Is there appropriate infrastructure? Yeah. And if all of us agreed and had a compact to create livable communities, then you start to have value creation. So for that speculative investor, they start to see, they will ultimately see value in mm. the product. Mm. If they buy today, that product will probably at some point see light of day because it was planned correctly. Right. Yeah. Uh, if it's just, yeah, take so many acres and just, as, as I've heard also said, kata kata, mm. and it's, kata, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pushed yes. through. Yes, like yeah. you said, you have the title deed, but it'll never fully get developed in a proper way, or if it does get developed, it'll be in a way that doesn't add value. Yes. So yeah, so I think for us, we, we stay keen. We like to work with, uh, you know, professionals and, and landowners and developers who, who agree and buy into that concept. As a profession, we try to educate and continue like you're doing here to, to make, you know, the end user again. You know, a lot of times the end user doesn't know any different, not for a fault of their own, they're just, they just don't, you know, they just don't know. They're mm. maybe an accountant, they work in a bank, they know banking. They probably work in, you know, hospitality industry or they're, you know, a, a school teacher, a school teacher or, or, or a matatu mom. driver, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us professionals who have studied this, who understand, who should be the stewards to make, uh, to create the framework, should be, pro you know, educating and providing these types of environments for them mm. to now then partake. Okay. And if everybody does it, yeah. or at least a majority of us do it, yeah. then we have better neighborhoods, we have better cities, we have, you know, we touched on green, you know, mm -hmm. sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, who doesn't want some grass or, or some trees in their neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. That's, I think everybody yeah, aspires uh, to that. That's why we pay premium for land in, in Runda yeah, exactly. versus uh, Karen Absolutely. versus elsewhere. You know, um, and to me, that's the easiest way to communicate this value building journey for people. Mm. You say, you know, everyone is now, dream location is Runda, Mudaiga, Karen. Why? Because these places were planned a long Absolutely. time ago. Uh, allowances were made for infrastructure development, Absolutely. including size restrictions. Yes. Mm. I mean, until recently, you couldn't do anything smaller than five acres in Karen. Uh, not too long ago. Now you can come down to half acres. Since they reduced to half acres in certain yeah. certain spots. Some areas. In some, some areas, areas, not everywhere. Yeah. Not everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, you know, someone will say, you know, 50 by 100 is the way to go. You can't do that in current. Um, and and this has an impact on 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 value. So even if you're not go buying to settle, you're buying to speculate and and grow your capital over time. Mm -hmm. You still have to think about uh, sustainable planning and development. It's Absolutely. not just a question of owning a piece of land that's 50 by 100, 100 by 100 with a title. Uh, which, which brings me back to another statement I made once, and this is really what I was talking about. Uh, I made a statement that tit just because I advertise title deed ready or clean title deed ready does not mean anything. Um, Yes, the title is there, but everything behind the title deed doesn't exist. Uh, it doesn't have the proper zoning. It doesn't have infrastructure allowance. Mm -hmm. uh, it could have even been produced illegally, even from a county planning perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really what, you know, we at Goshen Acquisitions and Grand Acres are trying to get across to the market, that it, it's, it's about more than just title deed. It's about everything else behind that title that you don't see. Mm -hmm. The processes that went to creating that piece of land. Uh, but, you know, I, I, think, I think at this point we could use, you know, our project on Kekun. Uh, as I mentioned before, we did a project, uh, or we're still doing one in uh, Naivasha called, we've called Ol Kekun, which is a Maasai term meaning by the river. Um, 
We worked with a, a, a copywriter, actually. We do this from time to time. When, when our brains are too, too filled with, uh, uh, with amazing ideas and we can't get them out, we reach out to other creatives. And this particular one, shout out to Eva uh, Wahome. Um, she came up with this name, uh, Ol Kekun by the river. And I asked her, why by the river? We're, we're nowhere near a river. <laughs> I know in Naivasha, but the lake is nowhere near us either. We're on the highway. And she said, yes, you're by a river, a, a, a stream of movement of people Extraction. and goods. Oh, okay. uh, so therefore, it's a symbolic river. And that's how she sold me on the name. It also <laughs> kind of sounds cool. Um, it's right on the highway, like I said, uh, at Kayole just about i think 2.3 kilometers before the famous turn off where the police always stop people, people for over speeding yeah. uh, and directly across from us safari center uh, has opened up with the naivas uh, mm -hmm. i know when we started the project safari center didn't exist yet mm -hmm. it was just an idea a rumor in fact mm -hmm. and now you know i took the team there um, last week mm -hmm. uh, i think it was friday and um, sorry, it was, yeah, Saturday, Saturday or Friday, Friday, we, 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 we drove down and had breakfast at Art Cafe, okay. you know, staring at our beautiful compound. <laughs> and that was a sublime feeling, I have to tell you, because we always tell people when you're choosing locations to invest in, mm -hmm. you have to be aware of what's about to happen. Exactly. Because that's how you secure your value now and into the future. So location, location, location. That corny, cheesy saying, what's the most important thing about investing in real estate? Location, location, location. 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 Yeah. And so that really came nicely together yeah. uh, for us on Friday. Um, what was your, what, what would be your, I mean, obviously you came up with a master plan Collectively, <laughs> design. It was a team effort. Design after Mrs. Manasi made sure that uh, we were compliant mm -hmm. uh, with the Nakuru County policies. W what are your feelings about what has been put together here in the context of what you just talk talked about? This is the first time, by the way, we've ever done fifty by hundreds as as a company. Mm -hmm. We've never done fifty by hundreds. It's something I have avoided like the plague. Yeah. Because of just my personal feelings about the unsustainability of of the way we as an industry have gone about it, mm -hmm. but here it made sense for us. Would you agree in your uh, in your professional opinion? And and what are your feelings about our road allowances, the green spaces? Uh, I'll, I'll, so let, I'll let the plan <laughs> start. <laughs> This is a, uh, well, I, I think, I mean, I looked, we, we, we critiqued the, the master plan mm -hmm. and we gave in our planning input. Yeah. Um, making sure that the roads were the right sizes mm -hmm. and uh, that there was uh, enough greenery mm -hmm. and that also taking into account what is happening around the, the area. Because mm -hmm. you're in, uh, next to Kayole area. So what kind of development would you like to come up? And mm -hmm. also facing the main highway. Yes. Yeah, you have to have a, a scheme that will stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When people are passing, they, they look at hey, that's a good, good yes. housing estate. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe it's going to go as a controlled development, mm -hmm. where you're going to control the type of development that is coming up, mm -hmm. uh, in, so that you have a. I mean, if I can see it, I, I believe this is what is going to come up, this kind of yes, development. We, yes, you gave some ideas. I, I mean, yeah. I think it was, it's interesting, you, you talk about the, the road, the neighborhood, the surroundings. I guess mm. we had a few, we, we had some rumors, mm. confirmed rumors about <laughs> what was going on a, a, across, across the road. Across yeah. the road. Mm -hmm. So we, we had to, we, we call it positioning. We had to say to ourselves, mm. as the developer, land developer is coming in, how do you then best position our intervention? Mm. First thing I think we discussed and I think we all kind of came to a consensus on is we have to buffer the residences from the main highway. Because mm -hmm. of the noise. Because of the noise, it's mm -hmm. a busy highway. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I wouldn't want to b build my house with my, my young ones playing mm -hmm. with direct access to the main highway. That's that's. But that's what Kenyans like. I want I want to my I want to <laughs> drop off from the bus so that my three <laughs> and see and my house. three steps into my house. You know, but I've never understood that concept of Kenyans. <laughs> but, yeah. but just yeah. think about it for a second. Once you live there for a bit, you'll you'll regret that decision. Mm. Right. Every every moment you're you're sitting drinking your chai in the morning. <laughs> mm. As your kids are playing outside, then you have to start to wall yourself in. You, you're really scared and panicked that they get mm -hmm. sn slip out of the gate mm. and then boom, immediately on the main highway. Mm. And you will regret that de decision. Yeah. So, there's, so the, from a planning perspective, we said to ourselves, this, the, there's a gentle slope on this, on this plot. It, we have a way to present ourselves to the street with a commercial zone. So we call this almost a, it's almost a mixed use scheme. Yeah. 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 Yes, we know at cafes across the street, but are there complementary things we can offer at the front of the plot to serve two purposes? Yeah. One convenience for the for the actual end users in the scheme. Yeah. Maybe give them a small convenience, little small retail shop. Yes. But then allow for a buffer zone for before we get into the residential areas. Mm -hmm. Then we also had a conversation about densities. This is really close to Naivasha town. Mm. So we are allowed higher densities. Mm. But how do we carefully curate that density conversation? So as you see on the scheme, we started with the commercial zone, then we have a, a, a strip of uh, higher density apartments, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, three, four floors, not, mm -hmm. not too high, mm -hmm. but still a little denser. Mm -hmm. And then a green buffer park, and then, then we start our 50 by 100, single, mm -hmm. residence, yeah. single residences. Yeah. Then we took it a step further, I remember this conversation and we said, can we suggest some architectural, an architectural language? Mm -hmm. Why is that? And I think we debated, do we do one type of house? Is it modern? Is it traditional? I said, maybe we suggest a, a mix mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. some traditional looking schemes yeah. and some modern. modern to paint some ideas for the ultimate landowner. So as someone's coming to buy their 50 by 100, we've already hinted to them, this is what can actually fit on your plot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what this neighborhood looks, could look like. Yeah. With nice man, you know, nice wide enough streets, sidewalks, I think we, we debated, sidewalks mm -hmm. I think on one side, because of a yeah. nine meter reserve. Mm -hmm. And then again, that nine meter road reserve gives you all your bulk infrastructure mm -hmm. opportunity. So down the road, you get your sewer, you get your water, you get your fiber, internet. And all of a sudden now, because of just some thinking on paper, we have a livable community. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really where we come in and add value to yeah. the conversation. Yeah. And those are not things uh, a surveyor can help you with. Just FYI, um, again, work with competent uh, professionals to help you with this with this process because it's serious it's as serious as life uh, in my view uh, because like you've said it's about creating livable spaces whether now or into the future certain things just have to be in place um, and I have to say I'm, I'm very excited myself because we're about to break ground hopefully in the, in the next two two or four weeks <laughs> okay. uh, for our perimeter of, uh, fencing, fencing the walling uh, the gatehouse yeah. Uh, road uh, network, mm -hmm. uh, complete our beaconing. We just received our title deeds uh, about a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I should say these are uh, uh, leasehold. Mm -hmm. uh, they're brand new leases, 99 years, okay. uh, renewable, mm -hmm. certificates of title. Um, there's a total of 47 of, of, of these plots, mm -hmm. uh, 47 including the corner one on the road, which is light industrial. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about mixed use development, we have light industrial user or zoning, commercial, all on the front, high density residential in the middle, and medium density in the back. Mm -hmm. um, super excited because of what it means for us. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an interesting opportunity for us to espouse the values we've been yapping about for years <laughs> uh, and doing things right because it, it would certainly be a lot easier for me to just chop them up into 40 by 60s, 40 by 80s mm. 
maximize, make my road six meters wide, <laughs> not give green space, yeah. uh, and just flog them. Uh, because that's what majority of the market has been used to. Mm. But that would be very disrespectful to the site itself, I find, to the community that it's located in, mm. especially to the investment that's been made by our neighbors across yeah, the road. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm very excited about this project for, for, for that and many other reasons. And we'll be sharing more information about that. You can go to our website, uh, the links are below. Um, and I, I would also say, uh, for those of you who have probably bought pieces of land elsewhere that are, uh, have a potential to be livable, um, and you're interested in adding value, whether it's to build your home or commercial spaces, uh, please feel free to reach out to Mrs. Manasse and uh, Chris. Uh, all their details are in the link below. Um, reach out to them directly and, and get your stuff done right. There is a cost implication, obviously. They do not offer their qualified services as a charitable <laughs> exercise. Uh, but you will not regret it. I promise you that. And in, in, in most cases, you're required to by law anyway. So with those few and many words, anything you'd like to, to close with? Yeah, I would like just to say that uh, we are very excited um, and honored to be part and parcel of this uh, project that is coming up um, in Naivasha, which uh, has been designed and planned according to the regulations of the country. And this is something that we as planners would like to, to see happen mm. in most of the projects not just people coming up with the chopping of plots without providing any infrastructure. Mm. So we really look forward to being of service to you on these projects and many other projects and wishing you all the best. Thank you, mm. I appreciate that. Mm. Uh, of course, we're, we're working on another one by Lake Elementita. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, similar size, 6.9, 6.85 acres, I think, yeah. right uh, on the lake, mm. uh, going through the motions with Mrs. Manasse. And I, I should also say uh, thank you to you, Mrs. Manasse, because not, not just for your expertise that you brought to the table mm. for this project, which gave me a lot of comfort around making sure at the end of the day I'm giving value to our customers, because mm. uh, this is not a drive-by situation for us. We hope to do this for generations to come, and it's important that we set our customers up to win. And so in that context, I'm very grateful for your engagement. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you're highly sought after, your perspective and your, um, your experience are invaluable for us. Um, and equally as important, you know, we had a situation where, and I know it's not something that a lot of us like to talk about openly, uh, the issue of why it is possible for us as an industry to produce 50 by 100s or 40 by 60s in places that these sizes are not allowed mm -hmm. and it all boils down to corruption mm -hmm. end of story uh, my ability to grease someone's palm mm -hmm. to turn a blind eye or sign off on an approval that they shouldn't mm -hmm. uh, because it's more expedient for me it's easier to sell they sell faster i make more money i move on uh, my customer be damned in their future value uh, and in that context you know mrs manasse uh, did not cut any corners. We had a situation where someone tried to delay the approval and uh, we had a conversation. Um, and uh, as, you, as you can tell, Mrs. Manasse is quite diplomatic. She doesn't like to, <laughs> to ruffle feathers. <laughs> uh, but in, 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 in many words, she was saying, listen, uh, this is where we are with the process. I don't know what you want us to do, but we're trying to push through. And you know, I said to her, you know, Mrs. Manasse, we don't pay bribes as a business, as a company, our ethical stance, our culture, we refuse to do that. If we can't do it clean, we'd rather do something else. But so please don't, don't uh, entertain that conversation. Please push through. We need it done urgently because we've been waiting a year or so mm -hmm. uh, at that point, uh, going through the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, unlike my experience with other professionals, uh, she said, yeah, don't worry. I also, I'm happy to hear you say that because I also do not 
pay bribes. Mm -hmm. I do not entertain those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I know it can be difficult sometimes with clients who are under pressure yeah. uh, to even go behind your back, back, circumvent and pay the bribe to the guy so that she can get the document and bring it to me. And uh, that is something I so deeply appreciate about mm -hmm. you, Mrs. Manasseh. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, too. And, uh, and I, I hope more of us can can take that on as a value mm -hmm. uh, that we can live by because otherwise nothing changes. True. Uh, so I'm very grateful for, for that. Chris? <laughs> Hard to go after that, but I think a thing that is a common theme that we've heard today is values. Mm -hmm. You know, value of the end product, your values as you're coming into to, to the scheme, you know, the values of the developer. I think if we, for us, we're we as architects, planners, we, we're made by our clients. Right? We, you give us opportunities to dream, conceptualize, I mean, sketch and put things on paper that we hope can become a reality. And because of the, the ethical and uh, the concerted effort and vision behind the team that you've assembled, we see this project breaking ground and seeing the light of day. Um, and that, that's for us, all we have to say is thank you. Right? We, mm. And you know, then at some point we'll be able to put this on our website and say, yeah, look, <laughs> we did this. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, 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 that's our ultimate dream. So thank you. Thank you for that. Most welcome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I think the best way to say thank you to Gushin Acquisitions is, is chop your fees by half on the next Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys well, are not cheap. We'll have a discussion <laughs> later. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, we're so grateful for, 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 for you guys making time yeah. to have this conversation. I hope it added value to you, our precious viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, share it with someone you know, love and respect uh, that is thinking about investing, you know, spending their hard-earned savings or even more critically borrowing money to, to make an investment. Hopefully, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guiding light on, on their journey so that they make the right decisions. And so for that reason, I'm uh, super grateful. And just for clarity, uh, Grand Acres, Goshen Acquisitions, we're not selling homes or buildings. Those are designs worked on uh, as part of the master plan that you as the land buyer can take and run with at the appropriate time. Our responsibility is to make sure that we are fragmenting or subdividing land in an ethical and legal way, uh, providing the utilities and the infrastructure that will make sense for your investment and guarantee value for you now and into the future. So if you're interested in that opportunity, uh, please make sure you reach out to us as soon as you can. Uh, we've already started some pre-sales. You can check out the information on our website, fill in your details, it will send you the brochure. Uh, and especially because these are lease hold properties with certificates of lease or certificates of title, this means that even if you're not a Kenyan citizen, you can own these amazing pieces of land in a very prime location. Uh, so if you're a foreigner looking to invest in Kenya, you don't want to miss that opportunity. Reach out to us as quick as you can. Uh, we are available on WhatsApp at 7 one one Again, that's 7 one one I look forward to having uh, more conversations and to hearing from you. Cheers. <laughs>